there is no book in the entire Bible quite like the book of Joel because it zeroes in on the prophetic day of the Lord. Notice Joel verse 15. Alas for that day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Let us see, let's notice chapter 2 and verse 1, the latter part of verse 1. For the day of the Lord comes, for it is nigh at hand. Notice uh, verse 11, the latter part of it. A great and very terrible, or that for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? We go over to chapter 2 and the latter part of verse 31. Before the great and the terrible day of the Lord comes. Go to chapter 3 and the latter part of verse 14. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. This book of Joel zeroes in on the day of the Lord. Now, in the book of Revelation, when you read it, you will find that it only speaks of 42 months, it speaks of 1,260 days, and it speaks of a time, times, and half a time. All adds up to 42 months. 30 days in the month, 12 months for the year, 42 months. The book of Revelation is mainly dealing with the last 42 months of the end of this age and then the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. That is the book of Revelation. 42 months, the latter part, right at the very end then of this age and the new age then that is to come. That is the book of Revelation. The day for a year principle in prophecy then would say and there's every indication that it's true that the day of the lord is about one year in length that means the tribulation or that 42 months is divided into two sections two and a half years and then the last one year and the last one year being the day of the Lord and all that's going to take place during that period of time. Joel chapter 1 verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Joel the son of Pethuel. Hear this, you old men, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has this been in your days? Has there anything been like it in your days, in your recorded history, even in the days of your fathers? Looking back, God is saying, is there anything that's going to be compared to what I'm going to tell you here? And he's telling us through the prophet Joel. Tell your children of it, verse 3. And let your children tell their children and their children another generation. There's going to be nothing like it, friends. And it's what Jesus said in Matthew 24, a time of great tribulation that there has never been before it and there never will be anything like it after it. Notice verse 6 in Joel chapter 1. For a nation is come upon my land, upon my people. And I've shown to you in other videos the people of the house of Israel and the house of Judah that they are God's people. They are the land that they have is God's land. He gave it to them. A nation is come up upon my land. Now I'm going to be very blunt or very plain and telling you that this nation at the end time that is going to come against the land of God that he's given to his people, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, is going to be the German people. They are going to be the head, the spearhead of a resurrected, seventh resurrection of a holy Roman Empire. 
and it's called the beast in the book of Revelation. And it's also called in the book of Revelation, Babylon, mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. And Germany is going to head this European Babylon, Holy Roman Empire, the seventh one and the last one. And it's going to be Germany that's going to head this group of nations that will be the end time Holy Roman Empire, the end time Babylon of the book of Revelation. For a nation is come upon my people, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. Keep that in mind now. And he has the cheek teeth of a great lion. He has laid my vineyard waste. I've told you on other videos here at the end time, the people, the nations of the house of Israel and the house of Judah are in captivity when the Messiah returns to this earth. And the Messiah brings them out of that captivity and brings them back to the Holy Land. He has laid indeed my vineyard waste and barked my fir tree. He has made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin girded with a sackcloth for her husband of her youth, God says, to his people, Israel and Judah. You should be lamenting. Verse 10, the field is wasted, for the corn is wasted. Glad a part of verse 11, the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up. Uh, the trees of the field are withered, in verse 12. Verse 15, alas, for that day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The tribulation, the great tribulation has already taken place. The people of Israel and Judah going into captivity by the nation of Germany leading a holy Roman empire of Europe. They will go into captivity from this power. And so this has taken place. We are now coming to the day of the Lord. And indeed, verse 15, the day of the Lord then is at hand. Destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Now, chapter 2, blow you the trumpet in Zion. Ah, trumpet sound. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord comes. It is nigh at hand. It is now coming. We have gone through about two and a half years of the great tribulation, the last 42 months of this age, and we are now coming to the last year, the day of the Lord. And indeed, verse 2 of chapter 2 is a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and strong, there has not been ever the like, neither shall there be after. Even to the years of many generations, there will be nothing like this last resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire that's going to take place yet in Europe. There will be nothing like it before, and there will be nothing like it ever after. A fire, verse 3, devours before them, and behind them a flame of burning. The land is as a garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, and nothing shall escape them. They are going to destroy many nations of the Western world. They are going to rule the Western world in the last 42 months of this age. They are going to rule it. Many lands are going to be made desolate, and I've shown you that in the book of Ezekiel and other prophecies of the prophetic books of the Old Testament, the nations of the house of Israel. And that is, let me say it again, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, France, Holland, Belgium, the Anglo-Saxon people of, of the British Commonwealth and the United States of America. You are going to be desolate. This power is going to come on against you. The appearance of them is the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Remember now, we, we've seen in chapter 1 a lion, now we see horsemen. Keep that in mind. 
Verse 9, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter into the windows, windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. This is the kind of power that, will, that they will use to destroy the nations of Israel and Judah. There will be nothing like it in all recorded history up to that time. This will be the kind of power and what results from it is what is mentioned here in verse 10. Verse 11, the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. He's going to use this army to punish his people of Israel and Judah. For this camp is very great, for he is strong and executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and terrible. And who can abide it? It's so terrible. It's going to be nothing like it in recorded history. Jesus spoke about it in Matthew 24. Well, he gave the time sequence, shall we say. Didn't specifically talk about the day of the Lord per se, but he gave the time sequence in Matthew 24. He talked about all kinds of things that would be happening in the world that we see around us happening today, friends. But he said that they shall deliver you, talking to his disciples, they shall deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated for all nations for my name's sake. Then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, that is, that is tying in with Revelation 14. It will be an angel that will indeed proclaim the gospel to all nations. Revelation 14, and then the Messiah, Christ Jesus, will, will, will come. God's kingdom will come after that, very shortly after that, relatively speaking. Jesus said, indeed, that when you see Jerusalem, you see the abomination of desolation, it's interpreted for us in Luke chapter 21, verse 20. Jerusalem and the armies around it and the desolation of Jerusalem then is nigh. And he says, flee, get out of there. Flee, he says. Matthew 24, verse 16 to 20. Flee, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, no flesh will be saved alive. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. And verse 29, Matthew 24, 29, get the time sequence now. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the moon shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. It's after this great tribulation takes place. Then you're going to have mighty heavenly signs such as never has been ever before. And then after that, and we'll see in the book of Joel, into then the day of the Lord. There, and eventually, of course, at the end of the day of the Lord, verse 31, Matthew 24, he shall send his angels, or verse 30, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. The angels go forth, and the resurrection takes place. The trumpet is blown. The resurrection takes place, and the saints are gathered. The angels are there to guide them and to steer them to Jesus Christ, who is by now in the clouds of the heaven where they will meet him in the clouds. And then, indeed, they will descend with him, Zechariah chapter 14 in that day, to the Mount of Olives. Now, that's the time sequence, remember, friends. The great tribulation, a persecution also of true saints. Revelation chapter 12 shows that. There is coming an end time persecution in the Western world of true saints of God. And until that time comes, indeed, Jesus is not going to return. Certain things have got to happen. There's going to be a persecution of Christian, true Christians in the Western world. The Western world is going to be ruled by the last seventh resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire. Two and a half years. 
and then will come the heavenly signs such as never was ever before or ever will be again the heavenly signs and then the day of the lord and then jesus christ return to this earth now that is the time sequence that jesus gives and so we need to keep that in mind as we study the book of joel